um, for our nice sequencing processing pipeline without coding for paired sequences for paired reads paired end reads because there's a really good tutorial for single end reads but not really for the paired so I'm going to run through that today using Galaxy so <laughs> Sam this is for you shout out to Sam this tutorial so first thing you want to do is collect all of your reads uh, read one is going to be um, your forward read two is going to be your reverse read and each sample should have both of them for the paired sequences so once you download all of those you're going to go ahead to galaxy okay and you're going to upload those here okay you're going to select them in your local file um, and you're going to upload them that might take a long time depending on everything here will take a long time um, especially if you have very big files here are what they should look like um, according to what you labeled them and zipped files are fine so that dot gz will work okay so the first thing we want to look at is the quality of our reads um, you can look at this after trimming as well um, so you can go into fast qc fast quality reports <laughs> and you're going to go ahead and then select all of your reads of interest you can do multiple selections okay and you don't have to touch anything else and go ahead press run tool okay when those are done then it should look something like this they'll they'll come up on the side over here and they'll come up here um, these are the different parameters of quality you can see this is pretty good quality throughout the read and the, the length of the sequence um, if you notice here though we have our adapters you know pretty high they need to be removed so we're going to do that after trimming okay and you can look at other things here as well um, but once you're done looking at the quality we're ready to go ahead and trim so you can go to trim matic okay right here trim matic and because we're dealing with paired, we're going to go to this option, not the collection option. Okay, two separate input files. We have those read ones and read twos. Okay, um, we're going to do multiple data files for both read one and read two, right? Um, okay, so here I labeled them as forward and reverse, but you know, it, it was originally um, over here read one and read two. Okay, for read two, you're gonna do the reverse. Okay, perfect. And you're gonna leave all everything else alone. We're not gonna use the Illumina clip adapter removal because we have a specific one for our specific adapter. Our specific adapter is called um, the dual index UMI adapter and we have a UMI tool that will remove those adapters specifically. The Illumina clip uh, will not really non-specifically remove the adapter so we it's not really going to be helpful to use it. Um, we also want to maintain this here um, for and ratio or sorry 12 20 ratio this 20 um, is kind of the threshold for the quality we want to have you're going to go ahead and run that when you're done running that you'll get a bunch of trimmatic files which will look um, like this over here okay now we're ready to remove those adapters so you're going to have to find the adapter remover that is specific for the adapters used in your experiment um, but for this experiment, we have UMI tools. Okay, we're going to use the extract. Okay, so again, we have those paired end reads. Um, you can go select your trimmatic R1 paired. Okay, we are so the first 
uh, reads you're going to put in here are going to be the R1s. Second reads you're going to be putting in here are the R2s. But regardless, you want them to say paired. Okay, you're going to ignore all of the unpaired ones. Okay, so let's select all of our R1 paired. And over here, you're going to select all of your R2 paired, your Trimomatic files that we just downloaded. R2 paired. But your barcode pattern. For our particular adapter, it was about eight bases, but um, for whatever complicated reason, um, there were some problems, and so we have to kind of make this pattern that it recognizes. Um, don't tell me where I got that. I don't even remember, but um, you're going to have to do a little bit of research. This is probably the most difficult part of the process because it, it's specialized based on every experiment, what adapter they used, and um, what kind of barcode pattern they had, and what you'll need to use. Again, for our specific case, we're using um, this pattern and the uh, rejects, re, rejects, rejects, okay. Anyway, um, you can leave everything else alone and then run that, okay? And that's <coughs> gonna give you all of your UMI extracted files, okay? So you're gonna get, um, let's see here. I renamed all of these, but you're gonna get all those UMI files. Okay, great. So once you're done with UMI, now it's time to do this high set, high set two, okay, um, to do that alignment, okay. Now we are going to use the built-in genome. You're gonna search, uh, in our case, we are working with mice, and this is the most recent reference genome for mice. We're gonna use the best. Um, we have that paired end multi-select. Uh, you're going to go ahead, press all of the first reads, so read ones. And then here you're going to select all the read twos. Okay. Okay, great. We're gonna leave it as unstranded, okay? You don't wanna give it a forward or reverse. We're gonna leave it as unstranded. <coughs> and then everything else can be the same. You can run that, okay? And it will give you all of these high set to files, okay? I recommend consistently renaming the documents because I only use three samples for the treatment, three samples for the control, and it already is kind of out of control here with the number of files we're dealing with, um, and the names can get pretty crazy. After you did the high sat, what you're gonna do is go to string tie, okay, string tie, and you're gonna go to the transcript assembly and quantification, okay. So we're gonna leave this as short reads. You're gonna go ahead and select um, your high set files, all the BAM files, okay, all of them. 
and then leave that as unstranded. Here we're going to use a reference. Um, we're going to put in our own file. Okay. So where do we get our reference genome? You're just going to go to gene code. Okay. Gene code. Oh, we're dealing with the mouse. I'm going to go to mouse here. Okay. And this gives me the most recent, um, the most recent, which is the M39. Okay. Most recent genome. Um, and that we want to choose the one that says the the main annotation file, okay? And for what we're doing right now, we just want the GTF file. So you're gonna download that, unzip it, and then once you've done that, you can upload it here, okay, upload it. You're gonna upload it, it'll show up on, on the side, and then you're ready to add it, okay? Here I have it down here, okay? That's my gene code file, GTF, okay? Um, And then we are good. Leave everything else alone. And you're gonna run that. Okay, you're gonna run that. Once this run, you're gonna have all these string ties uh, files. Okay. Next thing you wanna do is go to string tie merge. Okay. Because we need a um, a reference grid, a reference data set that has all of the combined transcripts ever found in all of our samples. Okay, that's that's important to have. So, <coughs> um, okay, once we get all of, our, all of our string tie, we're gonna select all of our string ties, okay, and then select our reference genome yet, yet again. Um, Leave everything else alone. Okay. And then run tool. I ran two on accident. You're just going to get one file. Okay. Now we're going to run string tie for a third time. You're going to go ahead back to that transcript and assembly and quantification. We're going to do this now a third time with string tie. Okay. Um, here you're going to select the same BAM files. Okay. The same BAM files. Unstranded. We're gonna, again, use reference, but the reference this time is different, okay? Last time we used an actual reference genome down here that we downloaded, but this time we're actually gonna use our merged file, our merged file, okay, um, that we got. And this time we wanna press yes, only reference transcripts. Uh, we wanna put the DESeq2, very important here, as our output file, okay? Everything else can stay the same. You're gonna run this tool. You're going to run this tool, and you're going to get many, many string tie files. You're going to get three types, okay? For every single sample, for every single BAM file, you're going to get a assembled transcript, you're going to get gene count, and you're going to get transcript counts, okay? What's important here is those gene counts. So you can go ahead and rename those. Those are really the only ones that are important, okay? Now... DESeq2 is able to interpret these, okay? So you're gonna go ahead, um, you can name your experiment, what you're doing, you can name your conditions, okay? And then this is where labeling really helps, um, but you're gonna go ahead and select all of the, the gene counts for each condition okay so we have our gene counts for this condition and then I have three gene counts for this condition perfect leave everything alone um, make sure this is the count that should be automatically there but that's how it should be uh, we want to make sure we're getting those visualizations that should be default as well. You can run that, okay? <coughs> and then what you'll get in the end is some awesome DESeq files. You're going to get a raw data and, sorry, raw data right here and then the visualization one right here. So two files in total. 
This is the raw data, my bad. Okay, this is a visualization. It can show you kind of what's going on with the transcripts, the distribution of the p-values, um, which genes were significantly upregulated or downregulated in your transcripts, pretty cool. Last thing we wanna do is go ahead, DEseq annotate, okay, DEseq annotate. And we're gonna go ahead and select the, the DEseq file that we just got, okay? And then leave that alone. We're gonna select our merge file, okay, our merge file. And then that should be good. You're gonna let that run, okay? What you get after that is this is the gene ID. This is the base mean. This is the log twofold change. This is the standard error. This is the walled statistical value. Uh, this is the p value, I believe, um, and the adjusted p value. We have the chromosome that was uh, it was on, the start and end position, locus position. We have just a column of the strands, uh, positive or negative. We have an NA uh, column, and we also have a column for the the gene name. Okay, and this is what we're looking for. Now you can go ahead and download this. Download it here, and then you're able to open it up as with text edit, and then copy and paste it into Excel, and we'll have to write the header yourself um, in that order, but otherwise, yeah, that's basically it.